Hi everyone. Now I'm actually filling a box of mayflies and Irish patterns or wet. Uh, and I was looking through. I've got lots of flies for a way way back, and I came across this one. This was a mayfly I tied uh, that basically was for friends, and it was tied for a bit of fun. Now I don't know if you can see, but it's actually got a claret hackle in the body, which is unusual for this colour combination. And uh, but it. But this way, it's, it's saved their day a few times uh, over the years. Uh, it's an unusual pattern. And it was all tied round a cape I actually bought. Um, it was a... Oh, what was this one here? It's from Whiten. It was a Hebert Minor, a dry fly cape. And it was dyed claret. They had actually dyed it claret. And, uh, which is an unusual colour for, uh, for Whiten. There you see it. So that's it there. And uh, I thought... Well, nobody was buying it, and I decided well, I'll buy it because I could always dye it a different colour if this colour wasn't any good. Uh, and I still probably could dye it, I'd dye it black, would be the, the main colour for it. Uh, but I quite like the colour, and uh, I used it in this fly just to see what it looked like for a bit of fun, and it ended up being a really good fly, so I thought I would show you it. Now, it's tied on, it was a size 10, this is a full, uh, the Fuller Mill Competition Heavyweight. And I actually used a black thread on it. Uh, now you could use a lighter thread because of the body, but it doesn't. If you're, it's fine using the black thread, and it works. So I'm going to stick to the original dressing. So we basically put a layer of thread along the shank. Just going to remove the waste all the way down until we're in line with the the bar by the hook. We tie in some tail fibers. Now it's just a cock pheasant tail, a nice, a nice brown. Yeah, good. That's broken fibres there. Take them away. Just bring it out 90 degrees from the stem of the, the feather. The tips should line up. Tear it away. A couple of broken ones there. Unusual. I've used this all the time here and I've got a broken, broken fibre so far. So now I'm getting broken fibres. But there we are. These ones are fine. Now you're looking for a tail length round about probably twice the body or the, uh, the shank just to balance this. The mayfly are large, they come off. I'm just going to turn them a wee bit just to get the tails to sit the way I like. Check my length. It's fine. I'm obviously exaggerating the tail. There's only three tail fibres on the natural but you can get away with it. Now, silver rib, this is a small oval silver tinsel. Now, what I'm going to do here is just quickly take my thread up, it's tidying things, coming back down towards the tail. Now, just stop about a couple of mil or so from it. I'm going to tie in, this is a full, this is FNF seals fur. I, I used that in the last set and it worked as well. It's just a lovely colour, it's just a nice. It's a, what would you call it a hatching mayfly colour if you want to call it. So if you get the, the nymphs coming off they have this nice lightness to it. So lightly dub it on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work with the dubbing down towards the tail. Gives it a good start. And then we start to work our way up. Just getting a nice taper, don't be shy, it's a big mayfly, it comes off. Fishing the lofts in Ireland, we get them as well in Scotland and England to get the, the mayfly. They're both in the rivers as well. So, a nice body. Now we've got our claret hackle. Don't be shy with the length of it. So we've got basically a bit of mill and a half of a stem there, so make sure that's tied on. And give yourself a good couple of mill near the head area. Just checking, there's one or two fibres. Towards the eye, I'm just taking them out. So we want a good turn to the top. And then we basically, if you think about ribbing the fly on the way down, so you're ribbing the light, giving that ribbon light body. They say claret on a fly, this colour combination is quite unusual, but it, it was tied originally as a bit of, just to see what it looked like. Uh, and ended up tying a few, because I liked it. And I've got plenty of friends that 
fishing the island, so it certainly worked. Three or four tons to make sure you caught in your rib. The rib you're around about five tons or so. Turn away your hackle. Wax your thread, tidy this head area up. Just use my nail to flatten the, the tinsel at the end where I trimmed it away. So you need a nice base of thread down, wax thread. It's a wee quick look. That's fine. Don't want to touch it, just leave it like that. But the French Patrick Hackle. This is it here. Okay, I think I've got one ready. Maybe that. That's a nice feather. I've got one I've taken away the fluff. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. Two or three turns down and you fold the tip back, tuck it back so it's really tied in. There's the tip there. We can trim this away. You can fold the hackle. You can Rubbing the scissors on the side just to start this, the leading edge especially. And then, depends on how heavy you want to fly. Uh, some like them really heavy. Some of the locks in Ireland. You get a fair wind below in there, you need something like this. This is a nice type of fly. And you always, especially, especially in May, the chances of a, a blowy day. And the locks. You certainly need some to fly like this. So I'm just to fold the back the stem once I'm happy. Keep the thread tight, I can break it off. And to see how the hackle's sitting. Now uh, I like to finish off with, a, with this one, the a, a same dubbing that's on the body, just a wee touch. There's a McPhail Mayfly I tied many years ago as well that I do this, it was mainly to represent uh, all the colours was the dun and this is like representing the head of the nymph as well so and this type of style works just been a wee drop on here just to tighten it up the way through the way back down towards the eye make a space for your thread at the head two or three turns and you put varnish on the thread and then whip finish and there we are just a it's an Irish style French partridge mayfly a wet fly All I'm doing is bringing out the fibre here as you wind, you twist it, it gets twisted. But that looks fine, that looks that's spot on. Uh, that's the type of fly you're looking for. You see, there's other flies uh, with other patterns. Um, time, like, it's like bumbles. You see claret, gold olive. These are a couple, of, these these four patterns are basically the King's Mill Moor. Get some mayflies, that's the McPhail mayfly. And that's, that's this one here, which I'm tying at the moment, so. Just a couple of rows to go and that box will be full. So there we are. That's I thought you'd like to see this. It's just an unusual wee dress and, and the claret hackle down it. Give it a go, you'd be surprised how well it works. So thanks for watching, until next time.